Welcome to the Successfully Unemployed Show. My name is Dustin Heiner, and I'm here to help you learn how to quit that J-O-B, that just overbroke job, by any means possible. Today, I'm bringing on a fantastic expert who has built an awesome business, has lots and lots of people following her. She's on national TV as well. I have Lauren Grootman on the show with me. Lauren, thank you so much for being here on the Successfully Unemployed Show. Thanks so much for having me on, Dustin. I'm glad to be here. Man, I'm so excited to have you on because thinking about doing something like TV and uh, that's just, wow, that's that's big time. I'm starting a podcast. Anybody could do that. So tell me, Lauren, how do you provide for yourself and your family without working that dead end J-O-B? So um, I run a website, laurengroupman.com, which teaches people how to get out of debt and how to budget. Um, on top of that, I also am a lifestyle TV expert, so I do television for a living, and I'm a professional spokesperson, so I represent um, big, large companies like, you know, uh, I worked for some major, large banks and apps and, you know, eBay, PayPal, those kind of companies, they're national television uh, segments, so uh, I do a lot of different things. I'm a single mom of four. And uh, I provide for my family doing this. That's fantastic. And so uh, a- after getting to know you better, after we went to a conference together, after getting to know you better and better, I'm like, man, no wonder why she is on all this national stuff. People are using it because you, you have the, like the personality really projects really, really well because you want to help people. OK, so what were you doing before? You said you're a single mom before. What were you doing before you got into all this and made that transition to now where you are literally that brand and you're out there nationwide, you know, being a spokesman and all that sort of stuff? So I started my website back in 2009 and I had two kids at the time and I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I had worked previously as a drug and alcohol counselor and decided to quit that job when uh, me and my husband started having children. My husband at the time, Mark, uh, the my ex-husband, uh, he is an actuary. And so he, you know, provided a very good living for us. So I stayed at home to take care of the kids. And I was in 40, th- we, you know, we were in $40,000 with the debt. We made a real, a bunch of really stupid financial moves. And I was the one in charge of taking care of the money, which was not a good idea because I really didn't know what I was doing. And so um, I was a stay-at-home mom. We were in a lot of debt. And I tried to learn how to get out of it. And that's how my journey started. I had taken like a computer coding class in college, but um, I really didn't know how to build websites or do television or any of that stuff. This is all like self-taught. That's fantastic. So you taught yourself. Now, I hate budgeting. I hate, you know, all that sort of stuff. I just want to make more money. I figure if I just make more money, that solves all the problems. Okay, so you started your, your blog and your brand and your website started growing and from there, you decided to get into like just being on a podcast, like you had your own podcast. And so talk about that transition from going, I just have a website where I'm teaching people how to do budgeting and finance and to where you know, you're growing to where you're nationally, basically uh, somebody that's helping other brands with their, their or brand management and you know being on camera and TV nationally. It just seems awesome to me. Yeah. So that was never my intention when I started my website. You know, I started it to help other people. I actually started doing seminars. Um, I was really big into couponing and meal planning back in like 2007, 2008. So I started doing like couponing and meal planning seminars at local churches. And um, I had like 300 people show up to them and I was selling tickets and I was selling, you know, I, I was like, okay, I can make, maybe make some money at these. So I started like putting together coupon binders. And um, so that's how I afforded to start the website in the first place. When I started the website, my goal was always to help people, to help people, you know, learn how to save money on groceries, to learn how to get out of debt, to learn how to budget. And through that passion, I think that people just noticed that I wasn't doing this just to get money, to get rich or to make money. I really have always had in my heart of hearts still to this day, a passion for helping other people and a passion for kind of bringing people along on this journey with me. The local news, I think I was doing a seminar in 2010. The local news found me and did a story on me. And that just blossomed into like the website growing. And then when the website grew, um, I think Business Insider did an article on me, which Nightline found. And then Nightline did a segment on me. And then Dr. Oz reached out to me and it just kind of like all like happened together at first. 
And then I got strategic with it. Then I hired a publicist. Then I started learning how to pitch. Then I started learning how to strategically place myself in the media so that I could get a book deal. That was the strategy for that. And then once I got the book deal, I had all these media connections so that my book became a bestseller. Um, and so um, there were all of these things that I did strategically in place once I had all of these things before, but my, my intention was never to get on national television. <laughs> my intention was honestly to use the money to pay down the debt so we could get out of debt. And, and uh, you know, within a year that happened. So that I was really grateful for that. Man, that is a fantastic journey. Now, if I'm thinking about eventually I would like to be on national TV or at least to promote my brand in a general, it doesn't have to be that I'm going to be a spokesman for a company, but it's like, I want national TV spots. I want to be on, like you were on Rachel Ray. I mean, that that's, that's pretty awesome. That's really impressive. Lots and lots, millions or thousands, at least a hundred thousand people watch that. So lots and lots of people watch that, but then also hopefully points them to your brand, which is fantastic because then that builds up your company. Now, should we start, if we want to get into, um, you know, being on TV and having national wide TV get to us, should we go out and hire a PR agent or should we go to a church and start doing that? And eventually, like, what is the best way for somebody to get started if they want to now start becoming a national, you know, brand where people are interviewing them about the, what they're doing on their websites and all their, their entire brand that they have? I think that's a great question, Dustin, because um, I I get asked all the time from people like new bloggers or people that have been around for a couple of years, like, hey, um, can you give me the Today Show producer's name? And it's like, nope, that's not how it works. Sorry. Um, first of all, I'm friends with them and the amount of emails, I wouldn't do that to them. You know what I mean? Like um, they get slammed with people and um, I protect their anonymity very highly because they, they don't put their self, themselves out there as Today Show producers for a reason. For me, I had to hone the craft. It's just like anything else. If you want to be a podcast host, if you want to have a YouTube show, you got to figure out how to do the video. You've got to figure out how to do your lighting. You've got to figure out the SEO behind it. You've got to figure out the placement. I mean, television is the same exact way, but yet everybody wants to just do it and get on there and get found and show up. And unfortunately for most people, that's just not the way it is. You have to hone it. You have to learn. There are so many things that go into being successful on television. You have to know how to memorize scripts. You have to know where to look for the camera. You have to know how to listen to an earpiece, how to take cues, how to, how to take cues from the host. You have to, um, to know how to lead a segment. Um, without looking like you're leading a segment. You have to be able to not look like a robot. You have to be able to like, one time I was in the Today Show and my whole segment was based on one computer screen that I had to wheel through the whole studio. My entire segment was on that computer screen and it broke 30 seconds before I went on camera. You have to be able to like wing it and do it anyway and just figure it out on the fly. So if, if, if I were to give anybody any recommendation, don't hire a PR company, is go and start local and get very familiar with local media. Start doing like the bottom of the barrel. Speak at your local like Lions Clubs meetings or um, Elks Clubs or like, I don't know if you have those ar around here. There's still like those little mom and pop, you know, um, companies like speak at your local chamber of commerce, like get comfortable speaking in front of people and, and then work your way up. I mean, that's what I did. And I mean, everybody wants to get rich and get, you know, in the media fast, but you're not going to do a national television segment, um, unless you're ready. Cause they have millions of people that want to go on there. And I completely uh, agree and understand with that because as I've gotten to know you more, I see how much you just want to help people. Like you just want to serve people and people that are prideful, that are just l looking out just for themselves. They don't come across like that. And it's easy to, at least for me, I can spot them pretty far away. And so when somebody is actually just helpful, it's so much better. Now, I love the idea of starting small because if you think about just starting a podcast, bring it down even much more, like it's really simple. Turn on your computer, put a microphone connected to, or even your laptop probably has a microphone and hit record. And then you record your podcast. Very, very simple. 
But even if you did that, your very first time, it's going to be horrible compared to what's going to be 100 episodes later, 200 episodes later, because you get better and better at what you Your personality comes out better. You stop doing ums and ahs and all that sort of stuff because you get better over time. So I love that idea. So is public, because you've also brought up the idea of Elks Lodge or, you know, uh, Chamber of Commerce, public speaking. Is public speaking and national TV or TV in general, is that like synonymous or like does that interchange or is it something you also have to grow into be where you can be on TV? It's something you have to grow. You just have to, it's not the same. Um, You have to be able to grow just being comfortable talking in front of people because you have to think about a TV camera as a person. You have to be able to like look through a camera and communicate to whoever's on the other side of that camera like you're talking to them in person. And that's what makes somebody that's good on television. And I think that that's why I do a good job is because that's how I've always seen it is like I'm, you know, looking to my mom through the other side of the camera. And that that resonates with people, right? I think a lot of times people think that, oh, well, I'm an actress or I'm an actor and I would do really well on television. Um, national television. And to be honest, a lot of times they really suck <laughs> because they're so script because <laughs> they're so used to like telling lines and being scripted. And that's not good for television either. So you need to be able to be like yourself and laid back and comfortable. And um and and that's really important when it comes to TV. That makes a lot of sense. And thinking of the camera as being one person, because when you realize like if you're sitting in front of the TV watching somebody like the Today Show, you're one person. So if you're being talked to like you're one person, you're talking to everybody because everybody is just literally one person sitting in front of the TV. So I think that's great advice. Now, tell me about the idea of your personality and should we bring our personality dial it back? Should we dial it up? How should we play into our personality or should we? For me, I am who I am. And I I don't want to be any different, right? But I'm there for one goal, to make the producer's life easier, okay? I want to show up. I want to be the easiest guest they've ever had on. I don't want to complain about anything. I'm going to show up on time. I want to um, leave my green room in good order. I don't want to complain about my hair and makeup. I don't want to ask for something or, you know, be high maintenance diva. I'm not going to hound the producer after the show and be like, I can do more segments. What do you want me to do? (laughs) I've seen that happen so many times watching other guests that have been like on the show with me, like follow the producers around and be like, oh, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? Do you want me to do that? I'm like, leave them alone for goodness sakes. That's just always been my take. Now, I do think that you need to bring your personality because everybody is different. Nobody is you. And so I think that people like me because of my personality, because I'm outgoing and um, I can be a little silly and a little crazy. And I think that that feeds really well. And I think that's why I'm a regular, I mean, I go on the Rachel Ray show a lot because me and Rachel hit it off. Like we have, our personalities are very similar. We have a fun time together. Um, and I think that's why I go on Hoda and Jenna a lot. Same, same reason. So you have to be able to do your personality, but you have to be kind and you have to like no boundaries and you have to, you know, be professional as well. And I've heard of many quote unquote stars that are jerks. And you could, uh, unless you get to that point where you literally everybody's clamming for you, I would suggest not being a jerk and being respectful. And just like you said, you know, treat these other people like the the producers and everybody like like your friend or a, just a normal person with respect. So I love that idea. Now, if we were to get started, let's say we already went through a couple X lodges, we went to the Chamber of Commerce, we've got some public speaking, we've interacted with people, we can talk to a good amount of people at one time, then. Do we reach out to like a TV channel that's like the news and say, hey, I teach about this. Like, how would we then get into our first local TV spot? I always say go and find your local media, you know, on a website. Find them. Find them on Twitter. They're always on Twitter. Local news people are trying Instagram and some of them are successful, but really a lot of them are on Twitter because that's where they find a lot of their news. Go on Twitter, follow them, start tweeting them. Find Find a topic that's trending right now. Okay, find a topic that's trending in your area, in your expertise, and then send them an email. Say, hey, I have a story, a story for you. Who can I send it to? And they're going to probably send you either their email or to the news desk. 
and get their email and send them a pitch. Now in that pitch, you want to not just say, hey, I got a story for you. It's about this. No, you want to tell them, I have a story idea for you and this is what it looks like. And bullet points, one, two, three, four, five. This is what it could look like. This is what it would outlay. This is how it could help your viewers. So for example, I'll give you a quick example. Right now, um, as we're um, talking during this interview, there's this new uh, Lula Rich documentary on Amazon, okay? And this is about an MLM company called LuLaRoe that is getting sued. Now, a lot of people are in debt. And so I took the opportunity because in my book, The Recovering Spender, I talked about how I got into debt from uh, a multi-level marketing company back in the day. So I took the opportunity to use that current trending piece to whip up a segment for the Today Show. I pitched it to them. This is what it could be. This is what it could look like. This is trending. And I know that your readers are very interested in this because they're tweeting about it. It's all over Instagram. So I know that your viewers are in debt because of multi-level marketing companies. These are the ways that they can protect themselves. And if they're in debt, these are the ways they can get out of debt. And then I send it off to them and they're interested in the segment. So that's on a national level. On a smaller level, you can do the same exact thing. So, and that can be done with anything. It can be done with the stock market. It can be done with the real estate market. It can be done with cookies. It can be done with Halloween or anything like that. Recipes, you know, and start the conversation going that way. How you can help them, not hey, I got something going on. What can you do for me? It's always about them. What can we do to help them? They're stressed out. They're underpaid. How can we help get them a great segment um, and be the easiest person they've ever worked with? Because then they'll ask you back. Have you ever read the book How to Win Friends and Influence People? I have not. So everything you're saying, talking about helping the person that you're trying to reach, helping them. That's almost like the premise of that book. This book is phenomenal. It's written by Dale Carnegie back like in the 1920s. I mean, it's, it's over and over bestseller. Like it's literally a phenomenal book, but it talks about how if you want to get something that you want, you look at the other person and say, how can I get them what they want, which in turn helps me get what I want. So exactly like you're saying, they want good stories. They want good people that are going to come on and do a good show so that they look good for their bosses and their customers and their viewers and everything. And so if you show them exactly how it benefits them to bring you on, then it's hard for them to say no. Then they might say no, but it's so much better than, hey, I am this, I am that, I am the best thing, and I, I, I. People only care about themselves when you really boil everything down. Like, well, what can you do for me? I'll give you an example. I teach people how to invest in real estate. When people say, hey, Dustin, I, I this, I this, I this. Can you just give me money to invest in real estate? Basically what it comes down to. I'm like, well, what do I get out of it? Like, I give you money to invest in real estate. Is it a loan, number one? But number two, do you have any experience? Have you ever done? No, you haven't done it before. Well, then how do I know I'm going to get my money? But anyways, think about the other person. So I think that's a fantastic idea. And but one question came up in my mind because I love the idea of you using Twitter. I don't understand Twitter. I don't know how to use it. I, I get it. I know the premise of it, but I haven't literally done anything on it to really care. How do we then, don't tell me, don't teach me like how to use Twitter, not that, but how do we find the right people in the local community, like the local news station or whatever on Twitter? Do we look up like their names and look up like the stations and all that sort of stuff? How do we make sure that we find the right person to reach out to? Yeah, so what I would do is just go to the, the website of the news station and find them the names of the people that you want to contact and then just go on Twitter and search for them and like them on there and then go to Instagram or Facebook and like them on there too. Um, and then just engage with them for a little while, you know, engage them for a week, get a month or something like that. Communicate with them so that their name becomes familiar to you. And I think another thing that you need to keep in mind and this is something that was always very important to me is to is the relationship piece, right? Hey, I don't have I don't talk about this, but I know somebody who would be great for this segment. I know somebody that would be great that you could interview for this. Help them out cuz these I mean news people are like the most underpaid besides teachers, I feel like, the most underpaid, overworked people. They get paid barely nothing, especially at like the bottom of the barrel people. They do it for the fame. And so if you can help them out and pass them to somebody else, and um, hook them up with some other people, like 
they'll be grateful for that. So my goal was always to be top of mind. Like this lady's really easy to work with. She doesn't have an ego. She is grateful. She helps me out. She's always there. She shows up on time. She provides great segment material. That's always been, you know, something so that I I stay in the forefront, which led me to actually, um, I actually started co-hosting one of the morning shows here um, in, I live in Syracuse, New York, one of the morning shows here. And that was kind of, it, it really helped me now being able to interview people really be a better interviewee, if that makes sense. So obviously we're going to be making, or let me ask a question. Do you make money when you go like on like the Rachel Ray? Do you make money on the Today Show? Or is that just basically you come on as a service? I make money for the Rachel Ray show, but I do not make money for the Today Show. Um, so you have to, it depends on what show you go on. Now, I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild now because after you're, you go on the Rachel Ray show so many times, you finally can get enough hours in to, the, to join the Screen Actors Guild and you get paid. So now I get paid. I'm in the um, SAG after union. So I get paid for any daytime talk show that I go on. So any show that's got like a live studio audience, I would say, that is like a talk show like Kelly and um, Ryan or Kelly Clarkson or any of those um, kind of shows, I get paid to go on. If it's a news show, like the Today Show, GMA, I, I still don't get paid to go on those. Um, and so I actually honed those back a little bit because for a little while they stopped saying my website name. And I was like, listen, like I've been on this show like 30 times and it's not bringing in anything for me anymore. So I'm just going to like hold off. And the last couple of times I've been on, I've been like, listen, I'm going to come on, but only if you say my website name, because we've got it. Like I'm, I'm to that point where I got to get something out of this too. Now you're not paying me. I'm getting paid for other shows. And so they will now put my name in the lower third, my website name in the lower third, which is like where they put, you know, your name and the website name. And then they'll say it at the end of the, the thing, but you can speak up and say, you know, is it possible like to put my website name in this? And, uh, for me, I've worked with the same producers for like five years now that I was able to speak up and say, listen, guys, like I've been doing this a long time. Get, cut me some slack here, you know? And so they, they did. That's great. Cause that's the next thought in my mind because it seems like if you go on like a local news channel, you're not going to make any money doing that. At least I don't think you can or will. And so, you know, if you're doing things that are not paid, you're not going to be able to feed your family with that. So how would that transition to where, okay, we're getting on local television and let's say they are kind enough to put your name in there. Or if you're sly enough to say like how I do, like if I'm on other podcasts or I'm being interviewed or something like that, I would say, and yeah, so what I do is I coach real estate. And as I'm coaching my student, I told him X, Y, and Z. So that gets people thinking. So you kind of say things that kind of reach in there rather than saying, hey, I am this and go check out my, you know, you don't want to do that. That, that would like, let, let's not use that guy again. So if we were to not be paid on these, you know, media spots, which is okay, as long as we can transition what anybody that sees us into paid in the future. How would you transition that, not necessarily on the TV, but like what now, how can you make money from the people that see you on TV, then go find you? Is it through the website? Do you have ads on there? Do you use sponsorships? Like how does that work out? Yeah. So one of the things that I do, that's a great question, actually. So there's a couple ideas that popped up in my head. So the first thing you need to do is you need to think about it as like a brand builder, right? This is building credibility for your brand. So now you have a media clip that you can add to a media role or whatever, um, if you do YouTube or whatever, you can now add this to your, uh, you know, seen as seen on ABC or whatever. That's that's huge. That adds credibility. The second thing that it does, what I do is when I go on these national TV shows, and you could do it on any show, is I actually target their fans on Facebook the day that the show airs. So I'll put a Facebook ad out um, to like the Rachel Ray audience of a picture of me and Rachel. Hey, did you see me on the show today? Um, you know, we talked about X, Y, and Z. Uh, if you want more information, just wanted to let you know I'm here for you. Sign up for my free guide or whatever. And I'll target Rachel Ray fans specifically on uh, her Facebook page or people that like her page. I think people have this short-term goal of like short-term gain, right? 
we need to look at this as like a long-term goal. Like I like long, we get like a long, long game. Are we in this for the long game or the short game? Right. I was always in this for the long game. Once I started learning like, okay, I can build a brand out of this. If I'm not getting paid right now, this is building. It's like a stepping stone for what's next. So see it as a stepping stone that it's not all about the immediate money right now. It's about building that relationship. Maybe you're going to meet somebody else for the next time for the, another conversation. And I've met so many people because I've, I met this person and this person and this person and um, networking is huge in the television industry. I mean, huge. It's who, you know, seriously. So if you can get in to meet somebody, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna skyrocket. That's a great point. In fact, I think just honestly, everything in life is about networking, about helping other people and just meeting more people like going to conferences where you and I both went to a conference recently in Austin, Texas. And I didn't know you before, but we met and then just got to know each other. And over time, it's just like, man, that's great. Let's have Lauren on the show. Like she's fantastic. She's definitely going to be very, very helpful. And so bringing you on and then also even doing something like a podcast, like successfully unemployed. I don't make any money doing this, but I love meeting new people, meeting awesome people that are super successful in whatever business area they've been in and media or uh, uh, I even interviewed a lady who has a bridal store. I've, I've interviewed lots and lots of people and it's just meeting more people and those people know me as well. So the more networking you can do, in my opinion, for every single type of business out there, the better because you never know who's that next person you're gonna meet that could actually do something really beneficial for your, your company, or you can help them as well. Okay, so Lauren, you give us lots and lots of great insights. Is there anything, before we get into the rapid fire round, is there anything we might've missed to start making money as you have done through all your online website, laurengroupman.com, to everything on media that we might need to know? So I've always seen my television um, and my, my website and my books as one cohesive thing. And so I always, always, always filter every company, every opportunity, everything through my brand values. And I will not stray from that. I won't promote a brand or a business that doesn't feel right to me and isn't a good fit for me. And I'm very protective over my viewers and my readers. And so I think that that's something that you need to set up at first, that I've gotten pitches from companies that want me to come on like, you know, television shows that want me to lie and that, you know, about just to go on the show. And it's like, no, like, I'm not going to do that. So you need to have integrity when you're doing this as well, because television shows are television shows. And um, there's a lot of TV producers out there that are trying to make really juicy stuff. And they want you to come on and pretend that you're somebody you're not. And uh, that just doesn't interest me. So you've got to really hone in on what your brand values are and your missions are, especially if you want to do television, because there's some slimy people out there, some slimy PR agencies that will literally take your money to do nothing. I did most of this by myself, just by communicating with people and developing relationships. You don't need to spend $5,000 a month on a PR agency. It's just, it's, that's ridiculous. And they, they put your name on Twitter or something with, or Instagram (laughs) with somebody and call it a day. Like, they, they prey on people's fame, on people's desire to be famous. So I just want to encourage people that, that fame is, is, is not all it's cracked up to be if it doesn't make you money. And so you've got to find a way to monetize it. And my goal was always to monetize it through getting a book deal, increasing my brand, and making it all come together to increase the brand in a cohesive package. Wow, I'm so glad I had you on the show. There's so much great insights and everything. Okay, so let's jump into the rapid fire round. Now, the rapid fire round is where we have short questions, but the answers don't have to be short at all. So the first question is, what is one nonfiction book that you would suggest that we should read that you have read in the past? Oh, gosh, I'm not a big reader. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not a big reader. Okay, nonfiction. Could be podcast. Uh, okay, it, okay. Something so, that we should, yeah. Okay, so one that I'm reading right now is called Atomic Habits. And it's all about developing good, uh, substantial habits for your life that can be long lasting. So I really like that. Awesome. And yeah. I'm definitely going to, because we're friends, I'm going to plug your book. What was your book's name again so that people can learn how to budget? Yeah, it's called The Recovering Spender. Awesome. I love <laughs> Thanks it. Thanks for asking. <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so what is one tool, one app, or something that you use in an everyday life? It could be post-it notes in your everyday life that we should look into using. Uh, the Flip app. Um, so F-L-I-P-P. And I was actually their spokesperson for about three years. And I'm not their spokesperson anymore, so I can't, like, I'm not getting paid for this. But um, I use it. I use it pretty much every day. Uh, it has a shopping list feature in it where I do my shopping list, but I also do my meal plan in there and I make a to-do list in the shopping list because um, I can just, ch- I, I work really well on checklists. So I do that. So I use that all the time and it has all of the digital grocery store flyers. So like if I'm running home and I need to pick up bread and I'm not sure like where it's on sale, I can just search like bread and it'll pull up all the stores around me and show me where it's on sale. Man, that sounds awesome. I'm definitely going to share my wife. My wife is definitely, she's the money person. Well, she helps us to save money. I'm the money maker. Not saying necessarily the money spender, but I do spend. And she doesn't, like, she'll call me on the phone and say, honey, there's this thing. It's like $1.25. Do you mind if I buy it? I'm like, yeah, we have plenty of money. Go ahead, babe. Go ahead. But, but I'm so blessed that she's like that because I have friends that are like, what's this $1,000 charge on the credit card? I'd rather have my wife call me about $1.25 than being surprised on my credit card statement. And you know what's cool is is she can actually, you can she can make a shopping list and then share it with you like while you're at the store. Yeah. So that you can yeah, see and you can idea. like check it off like while you're in the store and she can be like, honey, you missed the milk. I can see it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I'm definitely going to point because what we do, because we have a Walmart that's fairly close to us and it's pretty right. good. And so what she does is she puts it in the shopping cart. And so I just go through the shopping cart in Walmart and pick it up. So I'll definitely point that out to her. Okay. That's, yeah. a, that's a great app. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> that's a good idea. Okay. So last question is... If you were going to go back and give your younger self any advice, business, life, whatever it might be, what would that be? I would say to hustle less and be more strategic. Um, When I was first starting off this business, I worked, I mean, I had, I started off with two kids. I now have four. So I've worked through, you know, nursing and changing diapers and middle of the night feedings. And I kind of lost track of the reason why I started this for a couple of years. You know, I started this so I could stay at home with my kids and provide a living for them. And I started it in 2009. In 2017, I got divorced. And honestly, I think a lot of the problems from my marriage and the reason why my my marriage ended was because um, we had started working together and stopped taking care of our marriage. My ex-husband and I are still really good friends and we co-parent very well together, but I hustled so hard that I forgot the reason why I started doing this in the first place. And so I actually took a couple of years off of work, about three after my divorce, and my business still provided for me. I didn't work for like three years and I was successfully unemployed. My business paid my bills because of the way that I have it set up on funnels and autopilots and all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm grateful for that. But I would have hustled less and been more strategic and set work hours and been very mindful of the reason why I started this in the first place. Because I think we can get so caught up in the money and the fame and the do it all that we just lose track of of, of the real reason why we started um wanting to do this in the first place. You know, I saw this Instagram ad the other day and it said, I quit my, my uh, nine to five job so I could have a 24 seven job. And I think (laughs) as entrepreneurs, we can all relate to that because um, we can all like work from bed and, you know, until one o'clock in the morning and forget to eat and um, forget to take care of ourselves. So I would remind myself that just because I'm an entrepreneur doesn't mean that I I don't have to set boundaries for myself and set work hours and uh, take care of myself and take care, you know, remember why I I did what I do. That's a great point. I love that idea because I we I read the Bible and the Bible says, what does it matter if you gain the whole world but forfeit your soul? And so you got to have the right priorities in line. And so like for me, and you know this, my wife is my number one priority next to God, then also my kids. And then everything else comes after that because, you know, God forbid I lose my wife, then that's going to be really bad. Then what if I lose my kids? Because I'm just so striving for 
money or fame or whatever. Like that's, that's not important. In the end, when I'm on my deathbed, Lord willing, many, many years from now, I'm going to be looking back and say, praise the Lord. I have my wife and my kids and they love me and they're here, still here with me. And I'm so glad I spent as much time with them as I possibly could. So I think that's brilliant advice. Now, Lauren, you've given us, oh, it's, it's been great. And plus, like I said, you and I are friends and being able to chat and get to pick your brain on this media stuff. I mean, it's pretty awesome to me, like my idea, but I know people who want to check out everything that you put out, find your book, find your website. Tell us about how people can find you. Yeah. So I'm on laurengrutman.com and that's spelled G-R-E-U-T-M-A-N. So people can find me on there. And from there, they can find all my social media links. You know, I'm on YouTube, Instagram, just starting TikTok, you know, trying to trying to learn it. I've got my kids editing my videos. Currently. Wait, 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 wait. Are you, are you dancing on there? Like are you doing like, like dances? It's, oh, my oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> I love it. I, you know, I oh, am. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> my kids, they're mm. like, they always are like, mom. Like I, I remember I did um, a TikTok the other day and I winked, I winked in it during like a transition. And my 16 year old son came up to me. He's like, mom, never do that again. Please. Oh, <laughs> you know, like it just totally embarrassed him. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it extra now. You know, that's my mentality. How can I embarrass I, you more? I agree. Exactly. <laughs> I tell my kids my goal in life, like a daddy's goal in life is to embarrass his kids. Yep. And so if you say I'm being embarrassing to you, you better believe the dial is getting turned up to 11. Like it's going to get even more I just had that conversation <laughs> yesterday with my daughters because they're like, stop mom, <laughs> stop being extra. You know, um, so, but yeah, they can find me on there and um, they can find me on the Rachel Ray show uh, monthly and they can find me on the Today Show sporadically whenever they find me on there. But I'm starting a podcast, a uh, Facebook live show called Budgeting Doesn't Work, and that will be launching uh, January 1st. So uh, I'm excited about that as well. And you're also get the podcast and you're also starting a membership where you're going to be helping people how to do this. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So the, the online, the, the Facebook live show is called budgeting doesn't work and it's called uh, tough money discussions for regular people. So we're going to be talking about the reasons why budgeting doesn't work. And then I have a community um, that's going to be uh, geared towards helping people figure out why budgeting doesn't work for them and then help them actually succeed at getting their finances in order. So I'm excited about that. Man, I'm excited for you, Lauren. Oh, hey, it's been fantastic having you on the show. So thank you so much for your time. I know everybody's going to get a lot of it. So thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you.